Turtles are great creatures and they deserve to be saved. A lot of people don't want turtles to go extinct in 2016. People need to help these creatures that live in our area because God made all creatures and they all have a purpose. We need to save the turtles because they need our help. Many of them have either died by ghost crowds or simply people not turning off their lights. We can't just abandon them and not help them. It would be like God just leaving us. If, if he just said, oh, they sin, I'm not going to forgive them, then we would all suffer. But since he's there for us, we are, we are saved. We are going to do this fundraiser to make sure that they get the care that they need. The reason that we are going to help the turtles is that they are endangered because of being hit by boats or being tangled in fishing line or eating plastic, oil spills, or other things that turtles should not be consumed. We can solve some of these problems by picking up any, picking up trash on the beach. Need to save we need to save these creatures because there is so much to be discovered about the turtles and the fact that they are God's creatures. This is Frank the turtle. Frank is a green turtle and he is a sub-adult. The gender is unknown because they haven't done the gender test on him yet. Frank arrived at the Mount Marine Turtle Hospital on February 18, 2016. He has been in the hospital for 53 days. Frank was found floating in the intercoastal waterway, unable to submerge. Frank had an old boat strike as well. regular turtle. That's because he's missing a flipper on the front right side. He is a green juvenile turtle and the gender is still unknown. He arrived at Moat Hospital on February 12, 2016 and he has been there for 61 days. This is Squirt. He is a juvenile Kemp's Ridley and his gender is unknown. He arrived at the Moat Marine Hospital on April 30th, 2015. He has been there for 349 days in total. He has an old boat strike. He also has a jaw problem, which keeps him from opening his jaw all the way. Because of this problem, they have to fillet his fish really small so he can eat. Our final turtle is Captain. She is a juvenile green and she is a female. She arrived at Moat on March 20th, 2014 and she has been there for 755 days. The reason you see those little black things on her shell is because she has a problem with her buoyancy, meaning she can't float or sink correctly. Sure, my name is Jenna Rouse. Um, J-E-N-N-A-R-O-U-S-E and I am a Rehabilitation Animal Care Technician here at Mount Marine Laboratory. Okay, could you describe one of your typical work days? Sure, I'll try my best. Every day is very different. Um, so we arrive to work before 7 a.m. and start preparing food for all of the patients in rehab. So when we have sea turtles in rehab, we weigh out a diet for each animal for the whole day and we cut up their food based on the size of the animal. So we cut up and weigh out capelin, shrimp, squid. Some of our green sea turtles get romaine lettuce or seagrass. Um, then we go and feed all the turtles. If they're on any medications, we actually hide the pills right in their food. That way we can get them the medications without having to take them out of the water. Um, every day we check water quality on each of the animal's tanks to make sure that everything's at a safe level. We do a lot of cleaning. Anytime one of the animals defecates, we want to scoop it out right away. We keep notes about what they're doing, who's doing what. 
Um, some of the turtles that aren't eating on their own have to get medical treatments every day, whether that's x-rays or blood work or giving or us giving them fluids or injections. So later on, once everyone's fed, we'll take those turtles out of the water and give them the medications that they need if they're not eating. Um, the thing that's really interesting about this job is we never know when a new animal is going to come in. So we try to get caught up and get everything done in the morning so that if new animals come in in the afternoon, so that's kind of a, a main day, but again, every day is so different. You never know how many animals we're going to have, what they're going to be doing, so it's really fun. It's all different. What parts of your job do you find most challenging? Um, probably the parts of my job that I find the most challenging are when the animals don't make it or don't have a chance. Um, so all of the animals that are here are, each have their own story to tell. They're all interesting in their own way. So of course I always want them all to make it back out to the wild, but that just isn't always the case in rehab. So that can be challenging is losing animals that you had for a while that have been feeding, or even animals that first come in that don't make it. And what do you find most enjoyable? most enjoyable part of my job is when an animal that's in rehab turns a corner. So whether that be they start swimming stronger or start eating on their own for the first time, just when they let on or show some sign that they have a chance of being released. It's most rewarding. I still get excited about it every single time. How and when did you realize that you wanted to job? When I was a little girl, I used to play dolphin doctor. And I did it two ways. One, we had a map on my school playground, and my friends would be pretend to be stranded dolphins, and they'd roll onto the map, and then I'd push them off. And also, when I'd go up north to my grandparents' cottage in Wisconsin, I would take the canoe into the water and turn it upside down and pretend it was a stranded dolphin, and I would listen to its heart with measuring cups. So I'd say as long as I can remember, I wanted to do animal rehab. Um, Tell us a little bit about some of the turtles you have currently. Well, right now we have 12 sea turtles. We have one loggerhead, one Kemp's Ridley, and all the rest are juvenile green sea turtles. Um, my favorite sea turtle that we have in our non pack area is a little sea turtle named Wrigley. He only has three flippers, but he's doing just fine. He swims just as good as any other sea turtle. We have him in deep water eating on his own. So once his blood works better, we see no reason that he can't be released. And then my favorite sea turtle that's in the fibropapilloma area, or the sea turtles with the fibropapilloma virus, his name is Pickle. And he's my favorite because it took him two weeks before he'd start eating food. And so it's great. He just started eating last week, so it's neat to see him get stronger every day. Those are my two favorites right now. Around how many hatchlings do you take in? the Hatchet Hospital when it, when it is hatching season. So I believe last year there was over a thousand hatchlings that came into the Hatchling Hospital at one point or another. Um, a lot of them will stay in a bucket overnight, the ones that didn't go out the night that they're nest hatched, and people will take them to the beach the next night and give them a second chance. Um, some of them are either found in pools or found in storm water collection areas. Those animals that have been in the water have to stay longer. They actually get put in tanks here, and we feed them, and do supportive care until they're strong enough to eat. So over a thousand. What are some of the major threats for sea turtles? Major threats for sea turtles are, unfortunately, a lot of it is human related. Um, sea turtles are opportunistic feeders. So they accidentally eat things they're not supposed to. We have sea turtles that have come in that have swallowed fishing line, fishing hooks, plastic. So that's one major thing. Um, we also have a few turtles every year that come in showing signs of a boat strike. So boats can sometimes be harmful if the sea turtles are too weak or too sick to get out of the way. And then of course with all the with all the little hatchlings and beach lighting or chairs like this that are in the way or nesting, those can also be um, what should we do if you see an unprotected nest on the beach? If you see an unprotected nest on the beach, you can call Mulberry and Laboratory Sea Turtle Program. Um, they're in charge of coming out to the beach and marking the nest. 
As far as whether you should touch it, you should not. Sea turtles are endangered and threatened species, so they are federally protected. So you should never touch them unless someone with a permit tells you to. So just call them off. Uh, what do humans do that can cause harm to a sea turtle? Well, I kind of already touched it on it already, but probably the, the main thing that humans can do that can cause harm is littering. Um, we know there's a lot of plastics and other trash in the oceans, and these animals, you know, if they're hungry, they don't always know about it, that it's not food that they should be eating. So I think the most harmful thing that people do is just not disposing of trash properly and not recycling. Um, would you agree that one of the main reasons people don't show concern for the turtles is that they don't know about them? I definitely agree. I don't think people want to hurt people sea turtles on purpose at all. I think maybe they don't think about when they, for instance, drop a straw on land that it could easily end up in our oceans. Or with the nesting, if they see an animal nesting, they might want to go watch it and go too close. They don't realize that that can be stressful for the animals. So I do overall agree that people don't need to do harm, but sometimes they just don't know anything. What would you recommend that we do to save as far as what we can do for saving sea turtles, education is so important. So if we can get the message out about potential threats to the sea turtles and what we can do to help, the more people that we reach out to and the more people that learn these lessons we keep passing the information on and not make those mistakes. Um, is there anything else that you think we need to know? Is there anything else you want to know? Uh, could you tell us about the fibropapilloma? Sure. So here at Mount Marine Laboratory, we do have sea turtles that come in with fibropapillomatosis or fibropapilloma virus. And that's a virus that's found particularly in sea turtles. We don't know how they get it or how it's spread, but we know they have the virus because when they come in, they have tumors. So we do treat these turtles. We give them supportive care. And once they're strong enough to have surgery, our veterinarian uses a laser to remove the existing tumors. And then as long as everything else is good with them, once the surgery sites are healed, we release them. So there's a lot of research that's still being done about this virus, how they can trap it in the wild, and how it spreads. 